Today I'm going to show you how I clone sun sugar tomatoes for my indoor garden. Hi, I'm Kyleen and I'm the Provident Prepper and the fall is in the air. It is cold and any day now we are going to get a hard frost that's going to kill all of my delicious tomatoes. And these are sun sugar cherry tomatoes and quite frankly, they are my all time favorite. And they are like candy, but they're not heirloom. They are hybrid seeds and because they're hybrid seeds, if I were to take the seeds from this tomato and plant them in the ground, I would grow a tomato plant, but it wouldn't be true to the parent. And I love this variety. And so what I do, um, I actually started this about a month ago, is I'm cloning tomatoes. I'm cloning plants so that they will be true to the tomato, um, to the mother plant, and produce cherry tomatoes for us all winter long. So one of the ways that we're able to do this is just by finding a good branch you can see I already pulled from this one a lot of these are already cloned but something like this where I have all of this beautiful new growth you see the new growth on here and then I'm gonna cut everything off this till it looks like this one and put it in some water and I'm gonna go show you exactly how I cloned some that we will be transplanting today for the indoor garden Okay, I had to move this party inside because it's just raining too hard outside, which is a great blessing, but it comes with this time of year. So, um, I was showing you the difference between, so this is one of the cuttings that we're going to clone, right? Um, and this is what it starts out looking like, but it's really important. You've got to take all of this extra stuff off. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to cut it because you really, the more you cut off, the more you will enable the energy to go up here. And, and this one actually has a little place that's gonna start flowering. And I wanna get rid of that because I don't want any of the energy going to tomatoes at this point. And then you're gonna take these, see they're just kind of scrawny little things, and you're gonna put it in some water. And I usually leave it in a sunny window. I'm not sure if that is necessary, but, um, I feel like the plants do better. So you can see the roots on this and they, they really look pretty good. Um, they still have a little ways to go, but in our eco life aquaponics system, that's where I had started all of these. So I started them with just these same cuttings only for the aquaponics system. I actually had to cut them shorter, but look at these root systems. Like this is amazing. The, uh, just the, vitality of the root system when it was started in this little um, eco life aquaponics um, so what we're going to do now and this one was one that i was experimenting with in the eco life aquaponics um, and i started it way early to see for sure if it would work and then i potted it after it had a good root system i potted it in here and then i put it in a shady place out in my yard um, so that it it would um, harden off right and it wouldn't get killed but I've got incredible growth on this now so now I'm going to um, plant it just in the the pots now for my garden for my indoor garden because that's what this is all about is I've got these cloned plants these tomato plants so that I can have those incredible sun sugar tomatoes all year long once the roots had started I repotted them into these pots in the window as you can see, some of them are super healthy, but when you get in here just a little bit, you'll notice that this one is sickly and diseased. And that's part of the problem when you take these root cuttings or these tips from the plant. Sometimes you can have the disease that was originally in the plant. So I will not, these will all just go to the compost pile um, because I don't want to bring that into my indoor garden. We, we've got some good healthy ones over here. So it doesn't make sense to use anything that isn't healthy. So I have these hanging baskets that go out there and I love the baskets last year, but there were a couple of problems with them. 
one, watering was kind of difficult um, because sometimes I would, they would be overwatered, um, and it was really hard to tell because they're up so high now. In the bottom, so I've got this plastic in here, but in the bottom I have this little tray because this is my inside my house. I don't want the water when I water to go all over the floor, but I need good drainage. Then in this plastic, you can see there's little tiny holes in the bottom of it. But the reason why I wanted the plastic in here is so that I don't have all the water seeping out of the side. Sorry, plant. Um, but so there's a couple things I didn't like. And one is that this just didn't seem to be deep enough for the roots. So I think I've solved that problem. And that is with this fabric pot. This is a 10 gallon one and it fits really nicely in here. And I figured I would probably roll down these sides so that it's not too, too tall. But this should give me a much better result with these tomato plants. So I'll pot this and I'll be right back. Okay, so this pot is going to be suspended from the ceiling. There's a hook in the ceiling inside of a stud because this is pretty heavy. And then there's a chain that will um, make it just a little bit lower so that it's got really good placement right in front of that sunny window. I'm planting the plants, the tomato plants, on each side because my goal is to have them drape down each of the sides so that they have um, equal exposure to the sun. So that should work out really well. When I plant these, it's important to me, I went through and I clipped off some of these sides and I'm planting this lower in the pot um, just so that I can have more root structure. Now this little guy isn't as big, but you can see, you can see there's still some really good healthy roots coming out of this. So we will just tuck him there. And I, I would like to, I like the height of this pot right here because last year this was just so shallow, it dried out really fast and I just didn't feel like it really had a lot of space for the roots to grow. But just by adding this much um, and making it taller, I think the plants will do a lot better. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add, keep adding potting soil till we bring it up to where I want it to be. Okay, these are all potted. I kind of tried to, to tilt them a little bit up so that you could see them. Um, but before I hang them in the, or before I have my muscle man, Ben and John, hang them in the solarium, um, one of the things about having an indoor garden is that you're incredibly susceptible to little pests. And so I take hydrogen peroxide and mix it with just a little bit of soap, um, just a few drops. So a couple tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide, just a couple drops of soap inside of um, water. And this is all fuzzy because I dropped it on the floor, but usually it's not. And then I just spray it on my plants. And this is actually really happy for the plants, but it helps them so that they um, gets rid of any bugs that are on them um, and will keep them from being infested, right? Um, the other thing that I'll do is up at the top of, when, when we put these chains up, at the, up at the top of the chain, I'll put one of these fly papers and the reason why I do that is because you get all these little um, black flies that are just nasty and they cause a lot of damage if you don't control them and so by just putting one up at the top um, it attracts them and they're sticky and and that will really help to keep them down uh, the other thing that I do is well there's a couple things you can do the best mulch that I found for putting on top is like putting an inch of sand and what that does is it creates, it dry sand dries out really fast, right? So the, the actual potting soil underneath will stay moist, but the sand is dry and so there's no place for them to lay their eggs. And so that's super helpful. Um, the other thing that I'll do is I'll actually water with a concentration of the same. Um, I usually don't put the soap in the water. Um, I don't think it would matter if you did, but just a couple of tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide in a quart of water when you water them, um, the plants actually like it. It makes them really nice and healthy, but it also helps to control the eggs and prevent them from hatching. So um, that's just a couple of things that I learned from last year. Hopefully we'll have lots of my very, very favorite um, sun sugar cherry tomatoes this year. 
And with these, I don't need any grow lights because I'm just growing them in front of that sunny um, south facing window and I'm taking advantage of that. Um, the, one of the other questions that I'm asked a lot is will tomatoes um, pollinate themselves, right? And yeah, you do not need um, bees or anything to pollinate the tomatoes. Um, and you don't even need to use a little brush as long as you have good air movement. And in our solarium, we keep an oscillating fan in there and turn it on during the day. And just that air movement is enough for some really good pollination. So you still might have time. If it's not, if you haven't had your last hard frost, go and get a couple snip, just snip the end off of your tomatoes, strip it and put it in some water, just like this and you can grow tomatoes inside. So, um, and now for the question of the day, what is your favorite variety of tomatoes? Or do you have any special ways that you are able to overwinter your tomatoes? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution. <laughs>